Um, anyway, good evening and welcome to the webinar for today. And uh, before we go into, uh, you know, introducing the speakers, I would just like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Rongsun Ben Longkumer. I am, I've been working with FES for almost a year and a half. And I'm currently stationed in Nagaland. Uh, I will be your moderator for today. And I would also like to request uh, all the participants to please mute their mics so that there isn't any disturbance while uh, the presentation is going on. Uh, apart from that, we will also have a question and answer round um, by the end of the <clears throat> presentation, uh, for which you can leave your questions uh, in the chat box, and we will be addressing those questions one by one. Uh, before we go into the web, uh, to the uh, presentation and to hear what the speaker has in store for us today, I would like to just um, give a brief about um, what we do and uh, why we're taking up this uh, webinar series. Uh, so basically, this webinar series um, have been happening for the past uh, few months uh, owing to the COVID situation, and uh, we have entitled we have titled it um, "Community in Conservation" uh, in order to celebrate uh, the efforts of the community and also to highlight a lot of other uh, findings uh, from people who have worked in the field of conservation. Um, <clears throat> as we all know that um, uh, community conserve areas are, um, you know, it can be any, uh, what do you say, any type of um, an area where the communities are conserving it and where the communities come together to conserve it. It can either be a, a waterscape or a landscape. And as you can see in the picture, there is also um, a mountain. Uh, <clears throat> this is a Mount Pona range in Perrin in Nagaland. So it can either be one, either a waterscape or a landscape. Uh, basically, the reason why they conserve these areas is because these areas um, have rich source of, uh, you know, um, biodiversity within them. Uh, they also have the threatened and endangered species, which are, you know, um, we all know that it is very important to conserve them and to preserve them in their natural habitat. Uh, keeping that in mind and keeping that <clears throat> in view, I'm so sorry, I'm having a little bit of a cold, so I'll, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll, be, uh, I'll be disturbing this <laughs> a lot. Um, apart from that, we have this, um, <clears throat> keeping that in mind, uh, FES have been uh, working in the field of conservation, especially in Northeast since uh, 2011. And uh, we have been assisting uh, communities in Assam and we have our reach out there in Assam, we have in Meghalaya, we have in Arunachal Pradesh. Um, apart from that, we've also been uh, working um, extensively in Nagaland from 2011. Uh, we, we have been assisting in uh, strengthening their governance and management systems of these uh, CCAs. And currently, we are engaged with more than 70 CCAs and helping them come up, most of the thing is uh, helping them come up with uh, their own management plans for these uh, CCAs. Uh, owing to the COVID uh, situation, <clears throat> owing to the COVID situation, um, we have been uh, unable to go to the field, uh, to the fields, um, but we are thankful for the advancement of technology um, as we're able to, we were able to conduct a series of webinar series um, for the past few months with the help of our partners, uh, NEPET, <coughs> Habitat Trust and NCCF, that is the Nagaland Community Conserved Areas Forum. And we've been organizing a series of webinars I'm so sorry, uh, I got disconnected. Um, let me just share my screen again. Okay, is the presentation visible, uh, Yarna, sir? Visible, yes, visible. I'm so sorry. Um, so coming back, um, this uh, webinar series have been conducted with the partner, with our partners and um, we, we wanted to highlight and celebrate the local community's efforts in protecting their own uh, biodiversity um, and also create a platform where you know experts who have worked in the field can come together and share their experiences, exchange knowledge uh, with the communities and you know have uh, um, discussions like this like today. Uh, we also have been um, 
the help of any resource people, resource persons, like uh, uh, you can see the screen. Uh, there, the last uh, webinar that we had was on um, protecting the biodiversity in by, through improving livelihood. Uh, so, so we've been conducting that for the past uh, few months, and today we have. Um, with us, uh, Dr. Subhash Dhaka. But before we get into that, um, we all know that the northeastern region of India falls under the Himalayan range and <clears throat> the inhabitants uh, depend on the water that flows from it. So over the years, many um, perennial springs have also become seasonal uh, with the reduced in discharge rate uh, resulting in acute shortage of water. Communities have uh, managed to keep the natural resources balanced through traditional practices. However, uh, with increase in population and climate change and various other anthropogenic activities, um, the hydrological cycle has been disturbed, leading to a depletion of groundwater and dying of springs. So in order to address uh, such um, issues currently, a lot of people have been working in the field of uh, reviving springs. And today we have with us uh, Dr. Subhash Dakhtal, mm -hmm. who is a technical officer for Spring Shed at Rural Development Department, Governor Sikkim. <clears throat> he has been instrumental in conducting technical trainings on Spring Shed development across India with uh, different government departments, uh, NGOs, community representatives. And today he is here with us to talk about um, Dhara Vikas, which is a spring revival initiative launched in the year 2008. Um, so this uh, the sustainable management of critical springs uh, was launched by the government of Sikkim uh, with an objective to revive the springs and the streams and the lakes in the state of Sikkim. And so he will talk more about it in detail in his presentation. Um, but uh, so I will not take much time here again. Uh, so I will now give the floor to uh, Dr. Subhash Dakal. And uh, after that, we can take the questions. Uh, sir, you can take your time now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, can my, is my screen like on for everybody? That is visible, sir. Yes, yes, your screen okay. is there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, FES for giving me an opportunity uh, to share uh, our learnings and initiative on uh, spring set management. Uh, we are not a technical institute or um, uh, any NGO, we are a part of a line department in the government. We are rural development department. Uh, this spring shed uh, development program, we call it Dara Vikas in Sikkim, uh, is uh, an initiative of the department. Um, and uh, this started in 2008. Uh, and it has been more than a decade that uh, we are uh, practicing it we are learning by doing. So we are not an expert uh, on spring shed. Um, yet uh, I want to share our learnings in the spring shed that is helpful for the other mountain communities across the Himalayas. Uh, first of all, uh, why springs are important to us? Uh, it's called Dhara in our area. In certain parts of India, it's also called the Nola, Chasma, or in your places, uh, it may be called by other local names. Uh, you know, uh, when I talk about the mountains and the mountain community, I'll be talking about the community, uh, you know, inhabiting the mid hills in the mountain, habitable zone of the mid hills in the mountains. So um, we, 80% of our people in the mid hills, we depend on the uh, springs. And and we have, we, we have been depending on the spring since our forefathers uh, time. And uh, these springs are nothing but the groundwater. It's tapped since it's located on a uh, you know slope, it can be tapped using a piped water or a gravity flow system. Uh, spring water 
in a rural scenario, I'll not be talking about the urban areas since we are rural development department. In our rural area, we have been uh, testing the springs several times uh, when we go to the field and till date it's very um, you know clean it's naturally filtered and free from physical and chemical contamination and uh, you know there is a perception of the people from the plains when we when they think of the mountains uh, they think uh, that the mountain people might be depending on the you know snow melt from the glaciers or uh, mountain people might be depending on the you know swift flowing rivers, um, but that is not so. Our, we also have the perennial river systems like Tista and Rangi. They are thousands of meters flowing, thousands of meters down in the valley, and the glaciers and the snow are you know far above. Um, so basically, as a people of the middles, the middle community, they totally depend on the spring as a perennial source of water in the mountains. So uh, I just want to take uh, our scenario. So this is our village, typical village in the Himalayas. You can see the households here, you know, the footpaths. And uh, during the monsoons, uh, you just see these dots. These are the springs. And from these dots, people, you know, get the water for domestic and even for the irrigation needs. So uh, springs are the only source of drinking water in our landscape. Uh, in fact, the spring is a part of a water cycle. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they are a form of a groundwater disaster. So it's a, it's a groundwater in the Himalaya. Uh, there is sort of, a, I, I would say like, uh, they are fed from some sort of a storativity. We don't know exactly, we call it an aquifer, better a uh, mountain aquifer. So between the rocks and it gets recharged with the rainwater. So the spring water is a rainwater again. And they are also very important uh, in terms of the base flow, which keeps the river alive during the lean months. So this is the scenario in the you know monsoons. So when the lean month comes, the springs at the upper reaches in our landscape, they disappear and the spring on the lower reaches, they remain, but the volume of the discharge also gets reduced. So because of this scenario, the, you know, the gravity based system uh, that we have already put into place for the water supply, this totally becomes defunct. And uh, the people in the upper reaches, they have to carry water from the downstreams. So you can see in the picture, so this was the scenario. So this Dhara Bikas initiative, I'll just tell you a short story. It started in 2008. We had a program on the World Water Day. We were celebrating World Water Day. So lots of people, they, you know, complain that the things on which they were depending has started to dry up. So the department, you know, uh, had no alternative. If the spring are the source on which the people are not depending since ages now if they are drying up so means like as a uh, rural development department it's a mandate to provide you know water supply in the rural areas so either we opt for a very expensive you know uh, um, projects or get water from uh, uh, pump water from the river below which is very expensive that we couldn't offer it. and the people in the you know uh, mountain landscape they are scattered they are not concentrated in in our place at least in Sikkim scenario they are scattered so it's, they are not concentrated in one particular place so providing um, such type of a water supply from the government's hand was not feasible so uh, we had no idea so uh, then our people we went to the villages and we tried uh, to understand the stories. So there, were, there was a spring which was there since ages, but now the discharge has gone down. So people attributed it to, you know, uh, the spring or the uh, spring was is in, in our villages are revered as a Devitan or the place of the goddess. So some of the people say that our goddess might have been angry. So they were, you know, uh, performing the pujas, sansari pujas and such. 
many such pujas so that the spring would get revived many said that uh, planting of the bananas would help to revive the spring so there was so many stories in the villages but uh, our main question was can the himalayan spring be revived so if it can be revived uh, where is the recharge area of the springs and how much area will be needed and is the land available for the recharge how much will be the spring discharge increase in the spring discharge after you know uh, the recharge activity the discharge will increase in which season so these were our research questions before we started our initiatives so the journey of the spring uh, you know reviving spring it, uh, I, as i said started from you know 2008 and since we are a government we need a solid base to you know do some sort of an in initiative from the government and so we did a vulnerability assessment at the state at the gram panchayat level so we took the indicators of exposure sensitivity adaptive capacity and we did the vulnerability assessment and uh, after the vulnerability assessment water came to be the you know st stressing need so water was a main cause for the vulnerability in the certain parts so we identified the water stressed area that was the first thing we tried to do then uh, um, then we identified the team of capacity building and finding the partners because uh, in 2008 uh, there was uh, we did, we did not had any sort of a spring shaped model present in the country there was ralegan siddhi where uh, the village had successfully revived uh, the water sources using the watershed approach wherein people talked about you know uh, reach to valley approach so initially we started we also followed the same model so we selected a you know uh, a particular spring and then uh, uh, try to identify identify it as a you know a micro watershed and above the spring say for example uh, 100 to 200 meters we dug the trenches and uh, uh, the end result was that the spring which we had targeted did not you know got recharged or the, there was no increase in discharge so then then we sent our team team from sikkim to uttarakhand in upreyangkhal so there also uh, some sort of a spring shed initiative was there so we our team visited that area and they found uh, there also in uh, it was by uh, you know psi people science institute they had also followed a watershed model only so our friends who had gone there they just narrate that they were made to work from the ridge towards the valley so the ridge was very dry and as they climbed down slowly the greenery increased you know the uh, chirping of the birds were there then the water water was formed there so they, they just uh, followed a watershed approach but our main question was we had followed a watershed approach but that we had not succeeded so psi uh, introduced us to uh, you know uh, organization called aquadem in pune so they were hydrogeology based organization so again our team went to pune and they they got trained in uh, hydrogeology so then we understood that it was not the landscape important it was the geology that was very important for reviving the spring so watershed approach did not work so from watershed approach we uh, you know shifted to the spring uh, based approach so again the first approach was individual spring based approach. We selected a specific spring. Then we did the hydrogeological assessment. And then uh, we identified a particular recharge area for one spring, hardly four to five hectares of recharge area was identified. We did the recharge works. Then uh, in 2011, there was an earthquake, you know, and most of the springs had revived but after an earthquake so many of the springs which had revived they suddenly disappeared so that spring based hydrogeology was working but uh, again after 2011 earthquake uh, many of the springs which got you know revived it disappeared so again we thought that we should not follow the spring based approach so we thought like we would work on a landscape level Landscape level means we will, we will be working on a hill and we'll be, uh, you know, considering the springs abutting the hill. So uh, we'll be working for the cluster of springs 
uh, considering that these cluster of springs are having a common aquifer, so uh, we would be doing the recharge work in a landscape level. So that is how the story goes on. Uh, that is how our learning goes on. So this is about the vulnerability assessment, all the rich red patches you can see here, you know, these are the areas of water stress in the Sikkim Himalayas. So we are working on the Arabigas in these areas. Um, secondly, these are the para-hydrogeologists. These people, uh, they were trained in Pune uh, to do the assessment, hydrogeological assessment. Then uh, obviously like springs are the points scattered across the landscape. So we need information on that. We need the location of the springs. We need the discharge. We, we, we need to know the history of that particular spring. So all such sort of information about springs were collected and the spring database was collected and uh, it was formed, it was launched in the form of the website, like uh, Sikkim, sorry, uh, Village Spring Atlas, um, which now is not functional. Now it's, uh, then it, we started in .org domain. Now it's in .gov domain. So now it has been updated. Uh, then again, uh, getting of the baselines was very important. The spring discharge, we had to go to particular spring, taking a bucket, walk, uh, you know, so many kilometers off field, collect the data. This was very important because before, before doing, uh, before doing any initiative, we need to have a baseline information. Then only we can understand the impact. So getting a strong baseline information is very important for the spring spring shed management program. So then we devised a eight step methodology, how to do it, sort of an SOP for the spring set development. So resource mapping, then doing a baseline study of the spring, then prepare a spring set development plan or a lake revival plan if it is in the case of a lake, then, uh, then, then you know, do the estimation and then uh, uh, estimation, then implement it, then document the uh, you know best practices and so on. So uh, there are two types of structures. Basically, we uh, in the Himalayas uh, engineering structures to uh, we follow uh, for spring set recharge activities. That is one is we call it a pond. That is ten feet by ten feet by two point five feet. Another one we call it a trench. That is six feet by three feet by two point five feet. So. All these are made in a staggered way. So we call it a staggered trenching or staggered ponding. Because uh, since the slope is more than 40%, uh, because we, we uh, our, our you know, state is located, most of our state is located in the middle and the greater Himalayan slope is more. So we don't go for the continuous contour uh, trenching. So we do the, uh, you know, staggered contour trenching and based on the slope, uh, the length, width and the depth, uh, like this sort of thing has been calculated and in, in the form of a manual. Then another important thing is that once the recharge area is identified, the placement is very, very important, like where to place, just to, uh, this we call it as a micro placement. So just shown in the picture, like just digging a trench on the top of the hill. So this is this is a wrong method because uh, there has to be sort of a small catchment where the water should flow in the runoff should flow and the ponds and the trenches should fill up. And another thing is the way it is placed. So it is placed in this alternative way so that maximum amount of the runoff that is going downhill is captured. So our main intention is to, you know, uh, increase these discharge, the lean season discharge, the springs, the, during the monsoon spring, everywhere there are springs, there are seasonal springs. But during the lean season, during the lean season uh, from basically from December to, you know, May, the discharge of the perennial springs were uh, decreasing. So we want to increase this uh, lean season discharge, basically from March, April, May. So our target in the spring set management is to increase the lean season discharge during the lean months. So as I said earlier, uh, when we started the spring-based approach after the aqua dams training, we were focusing on the individual spring. We were focusing on the rather the water source. So uh, the recharge area for individual spring were sometimes coming over the private land. So you can see we are digging the you know trenches on the terrace field also. So that was how we started initially. But later on, we understood that we should not focus on, focus on the source. We should focus on the resource. That is the aquifer inside. So in a larger perspective. So then we took it in a landscape level. 
So this is an example of a landscape level. We have taken the entire hill and uh, the technically the fractures and the spring points and geological, these things have been identified. This, this assessment was done by the Aquadam. And uh, in general, about 1000 hectares of research area was there. But after doing this technical you know, survey, now this uh, 1000 hectares of area was converted into 120 hectare areas of effective, you know, recharge area. And these white patches have been, uh, you know, uh, worked out with the trenches. So many of the springs have re revived, uh, you know, um, around this. Area. So this is what we call a landscape level of spring set management. Some of the data I've said here. Then uh, another, another story is from, you know, South Sikkim only. So this is a water set. In fact, this is a water set. This is a spring. And uh, uh, earlier, before doing the spring set at 12, uh, so this is not from, this is not a snow fed. This is a seasonal, in fact, a seasonal, you know, stream. But uh, during the lean month at an altitude of about 1278 meters, only the water should, would appear on this, you know, stream. So uh, there, there were communities living over here. They were coming, there were villages here. So these two villages used to face, face acute scarcity of the water. So what we did was uh, we identified, you can see the dip of the rock is 35 degree in this direction. So we did the spring shed management over here. And there was a lake, which is shown in the photograph here. There was a natural lake here and, and uh, a fracture used to be here. So we, uh, and this, this lake was, you know, concretized. So uh, by the tourism department earlier. So, and it was dry. So we thought that we would like deconcretize this lake and then divert all the, you know, runoff for this lake during the monsoon season. So these two interventions we did. So after these two inter interventions were done, the water started to be available from this point, that is 1,405 meters. So in this way, like the problem of the villages located over these two areas, also. So this is another success story in the spring set management in Sikkim. Uh, this is another success story in uh, West Sikkim. Uh, rather, it's, a, it's in South Sikkim. No, it's a, sorry, it's in West Sikkim. I wrote South Sikkim. So there were again three critical springs. There was there was no water. We did an activity recharge act, identified the uh, you know recharge area and we did an recharge activity. Earlier, it used to uh, feed the spring used to feed four to five households, but uh, after the recharge activity, the water suddenly increased. And now, now the about 50 households are you know, getting water from the spring. So you can see that we have, we have tried to collect the data also. And uh, our trends, when we uh, you know, construct, uh, it uh, almost lasts for about uh, four to five years. After five years, it gets silted up. So uh, three to four years, again, we go and desilt the trenches. So that activity should be on. Uh, this is another place in uh, Malli Sumbuk area, the Harabik's Bigas project. Uh, so again, here also we have done in the landscape level. So all these green patches are the recharge areas identified and we have dug such type of trenches. And uh, the impact was that the household basically in the upper belt used to face an acute water crisis. They used to transport the water um, in the trucks. But uh, after the, you know, uh, the intervention was done, the water availability increased. The people saved the village saved about 1.28 lakhs per month. And now the poultry and the dairy farming is, is really coming up in this area. Uh, this is an example of, again, this is how the concretized lake looks like, you know, this was, this was, a, this is a hilltop lake, uh, you know, built by the tourism department thinking that this lake would uh, be filled by the runoff water, but ultimately it, gets dried up. This also we tried to, you know, deconcretize. This is recently done. And after deconcretization, we saw that uh, this is not a runoff water. The, you know, water during the monsoon, the water from the bed of the, you know, uh, lake, it uh, sort of started to ooze out and spread. So um, this is, uh, so in this way, now this, this lake is acting as a recharge structure also. And during the monsoon, it gets filled by the water also. This is another uh, example. This, uh, this was in fact a cricket ground. People, children used to play cricket over here. So people said that there was a lake here. Then again, uh, from uh, MGNREGA, we tried to, you know, desilt the upper layer. 
and nearby there was a you know source we diverted the source uh, we plowed this with the blocks tried to mix the you know soil uh, with the water and make a slurry and tried uh, and the clay to resettle it then we filled it up with the water and this is how it looks like today so this is completely in the natural form and it is revived um, this is another structure this year also we did one this is one lake in you know west sikkim this was silted up we did the desiltation of this lake first then we made uh, you know um, loose loose border check dams to control the uh, you know silt and we, and we made the trenches around this lake the you know main idea of building the trenches around this lake was not to recharge this lake but to control the silt you know silt flow towards this lake so this this is also been you know revived so this was this is the photo taken on august 2020 uh, so overall in our state like uh, since 2010 to 2020 21 we have covered about 721 hectares of land with this uh, spring shed intervention uh, these are some of the photographs i am sharing recently done once 40 hectares uh, in soaring in west sikkim this we did 50 hectares in again west sikkim these are the recently done trenches this about 60 hectares in south sikkim some of the recent photographs so uh, this is how uh, we are doing the spring shed and um, apart from the spring shed also uh, we thought uh, it was very important to understand the water situation at the village level so we uh, got a project from the national adaptation fund for climate change nepcc and we went to the hamlet level try to map all the water sources located for that hamlet how many houses are using the water and uh, what what are other alternatives available um, at the village level how many households were having you know the storage medium of water at the household level so all these things were mapped all these things are mapped uh, we call it a village water security plan and we have done this for about 84 gram panchayats in the vulnerable area this is one thing and another important thing we understood was like taking uh, you know uh, the discharge taking the discharge is really difficult uh, because uh, we have to a uh, one person can walk along the you know himal uh, along the you know slope uh, for about 2 to 3 hours and get the discharge of one spring and uh, there are so many springs we thought that why not we instrument this put sort of an instrument uh, on the spring so it's critical so identify the critical spring and instrument it so that the discharge will be continuously monitored so this we are doing uh, from the funding support from the UNDP and uh, another project uh, is hydrogeological modeling it's ongoing with the cdac uh, next is we want to do an intensive research because in the himalayas uh, central ground water board uh, they did not believe that there would be a uh, aquifer existing on a slope of 20% or more uh, they they don't believe that there is an aquifer in the himalayas so recently they have started accepting it uh, looking at the spring that there is an aquifer in the himalayas also so if we have an aquifer that is a black box for us what is the characteristics of the aquifer how it is spread is it localized or is it you know is it the network of the fractures and the cracks inside the mountain that is holding the water that is what we want to understand so we are doing some uh, intensive research uh, on this uh, uh, and it is uh, been carried out by sidak pune and department of geology university of pune and obviously like we now have developed an android based uh, you know app application uh, that a person can go to the field can feel the data and you know take the picture geotag picture and then directly send the data to the server so that is also been made now this is this is an example of a, you know a hamlet level you know resource mapping that's what these are the sources this is not to the scale this is drawn by the people but uh, this is very informative all these red households are the households which don't have a storage medium at the household level they directly access the water from the 
uh, you know source or a you know pipeline system and because of that during the time of crisis these households becomes very vulnerable so apart from the water sources drying up there are other things also which makes the people vulnerable so the management issues are also there so to identify all these sort of you know issues we are we have tried to map this at the hamlet level uh, this is an example of you know uh, mapping of the spring shed on the you know gis platform about 2500 springs we have covered and we have tried to map it uh, this is about the research that yeah. we are doing. Uh, we also do the capacity building uh, training for the field functionaries by Aquadem and Para because uh, since Sikkim has been declared as a resource state by the Ministry of Rural Development, so people from several places, they come to Sikkim and uh, it is not the Rural Development Department. We are the, we are Spring Initiative Partners. So in Spring Initiative Partners, there is already PSI. There is uh, Chirag also there. There is Aqua Dam also there. So if we are to conduct the, the training, uh, the, the place is ours. We have uh, we have the models. So people from Aqua Dam, they come. They conduct the training in Sikkim, train them. And that is how we do it. Uh, we also have uh, developed an IEC training handbook in the local language and uh, a poster for the common people to make understand that like spring water is nothing but the rainwater. So if we conserve the rainwater, the spring water would be conserved. So this is how, this is our IEC material, what we are having. So uh, based on our work, like uh, Sikkim model, Meghalaya, now I think it is implementing a spring set project from MAPCC. Uh, Sikkim Springs Initiative partners like uh, Aqua Dam and other uh, BSI and even Chirag, they are working in Uttarakhand, Nagaland, Mizoram, uh, NABAD has extended its watershed management program in the Northeast. Earlier, it was uh, more concentrated uh, in the mainland India. So they are calling it now a watershed, spring shed based watershed management program. So uh, uh, it's, it's again based on our learning only. We have even gone to Royal Government of Bhutan, which is also replicating the works of Sikkim with the support from uh, the department, EC mode and Aquadam. And uh, we had a privilege to share this initiative at the COP24, 8 December 2018 uh, in Poland. So uh, many of the, uh, you know, uh, institutes have, they, they have come to Sikkim and they have done the independent assessment for us, like the IISC Bangalore has done. So they found that there is an increase in 10 to 15% of the quantity of the water. It was done in 2014-15. Now, and then uh, initially when we started this program, we did not have any funds uh, or any budget you know, to implement this program. So we demonstrated the pilots in, uh, in front of the government of India, the then planning commission, they included our spring shed work in the permissible list of MG and REG. So now the spring shed across India, if anybody wants to do spring shed, it can be implemented. It is one of the permissible work under Manrega. You can use Manrega labor to implement the spring shed across the, across the country. Uh, we, we, have been, we have also documented in the resource book of United Nations for 2015, 14 also we have done, uh, yeah, 15. So we have got some awards and there are success stories and videos just sharing you the link like on this. Yeah, this is where we have been going uh, since 2008. Like we have traveled across India. We are, we are called as a resource person. We have uh, given our presentations. We have done our training programs across India. I have just tried to show in the map. So these are the partners. We don't attribute as a department. We don't attribute is the rural development department who has done. Yeah, we have uh, acted as a pivot, and we have uh, you know we we have collaborated with so many partners in existing in India, like like the government of India supported, the planning commission supported, the Mandrega supported, WWF has contributed, People Science Center, UNDP has contributed, Aquadam has contributed, GIZ has contributed. Uh, even an IIT Rurki um, has contributed. Bark has done an uh, isotope study, uh, helped in doing an isotope method of you know identification of the spring shed management. CDAC Pune has so it's it's a collaborative effort 
of our partner. The Springshed development in Sikkim is a collaborative, collaborative effort of all these partners. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your <clears throat> presentation. Um, it has been really insightful uh, hearing about the work that has been done in the field of uh, spring shed management and uh, and reviving of springs and its resources. Um, we we will now um, take time for questions. Uh, there <clears throat> there are about two questions in the chat box uh, which you can. Uh, address. Uh, so the first question is, um, what is the difference between spring shed and watershed? Are spring shed part of a lar larger watershed landscape? Uh, here, I just wanted to explain that uh, watershed, in watershed, we consider uh, reach to valley, right? But uh, watershed, uh, in watershed, we consider, mo uh, mostly we consider the surface surface runoff like it's 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 a program for management of soil erosion it's a program for management of uh, you know uh, surface runoff if there is any sort of a recharge if we if we consider water set uh, including the you know uh, the geology inside then it becomes a spring set so spring set is more geology based so if you do uh, suppose if you do a recharge activity in one watershed and expect that the springs lying uh, below um, would get recharged. Maybe the spring lies lying on the other side of the hill might get recharged. So watershed is a reach to valley approach and spring set is a valley to valley approach. That is what I would, what I would like to say. Thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, can we restore seasonal spring into a perennial spring through spring shed restoration measures? See, um, when we're talking about the spring shed, at least from my understanding and what we are doing is, we are trying to restore those springs which were perennial earlier. And now it has become seasonal during the lean season because there is something called a storativity inside. Seasonal spring does not have a storativity inside. So uh, there has to be a storativity inside to revive the springs. So if the spring was perennial earlier, it has a larger storativity. And because of less recharge, the storage chamber inside has less water. So we artificially do the recharge activity to restore that, you know, uh, storativity inside. So the seasonal spring is seasonal even during the you know heavy rainfall event because it does not have a storativity. It is more uh, sort of a you know through flow or a lateral flow only. So I don't think like we can restore a seasonal spring in its natural state into a perennial spring. Thank you. Um, the next question is what is the maximum length of discharge duration that of the fully recharged trenches and ponds? Maximum? I, I, I did not get you. The maximum, I think the maximum time of discharge duration, I guess. So the perennial spring flows 360 days. 360 days. There is variation in discharge. During the rainy months, the volume of the discharge would be more because there would be more recharge. And during the lean season, the volume of the discharge would get less, but it, but it flows 360 days. Um, thank you. Um, the next question is, um, how can con communities contribute in conservation of springs and the, in the spring shape? Uh, in fact, it is the community. Uh, who has to do the task as a government also uh, in fact in Sikkim also we 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 have said that uh, like there are certain areas where we can do spring shed development and there are certain areas where we cannot do spring shed development if the recharge area falls uh, if the recharge area falls under the private holdings now there the question of community comes so now because in Sikkim most of our hilltops is under forest department 
it's a government land. We have been able to do the spring set management. So in certain areas, when our spring set recharge area comes in the community land or the private land holding, so then it's it's very important to you know mobilize the community to do this work because uh, physically in the spring set development we will be digging the trenches. So it might look very awkward. So people may not, uh, you know, uh, people will not be uh, willing to give their land to dig the trenches and also community mobilization, making the people understand the, you know, uh, signs of springs, demystify the signs of spring. Uh, is, uh, de demystifying the uh, signs of spring is very, very important. And uh, another important aspect I would like to talk is once the government, as a government, we do the spring set management, and if the people get benefited, a government cannot repeatedly go and you know uh, do the work. So it is the community who has to come forward and do the repairing or you know such things, the desiltation. Everything again, the government cannot take for the second time. First, for first time we will do. Second time is the community only that they have to go and do the desiltation. Um, thank you. Uh, the next question is: uh, Can you please elaborate a little on the methodology or devices used for regular monitoring of spring discharge? A uh, methodology is simply uh, we take a bucket. Uh, we we take a bucket and a watch stopwatch with us, and just uh, bucket calibrated bucket or any instrument which is calibrated safer. So uh, in one minute, so it's LPM. The discharge is measured in liters per minute. So in uh, looking at the word in one minute, how much liter of water flows continuously from, flows from the spring? That would be the discharge. That is the simplest way of you know um, measuring the discharge. Uh, there are other complex methods we can even instrument the spring using the uh, various type of the gauges and the sensors that is for continuous monitoring but the simplest way is to just go and look take a uh, stopwatch and just measure it in some measurable jar or a bucket thank you uh, the next uh, question is have Ha, has discharge changed in Namtang since we last visited in 2018? This question is from Herang and he's uh, he's from the NCCF. Uh, Namtang area. So Namtang, no, no, uh, the discharge is same in Namtang. If you have visited the Namtang area, this are because we have not, uh, this was the earlier intervention, the success story of the earlier intervention. So this year we are going to again redo the trenches because the trenches have gone old now since it was done in 2014-15. So this year we are repairing all those trenches which has got silted up. So once the trenches uh, now and, and another important thing like we have also put some instrument on the you know um, critical springs. So this year uh, since 2019 we are uh, reworking all the trenches. So next year only I'll be able to comment looking at the discharge that whether the discharge has really increased or not. Or else this was the work done uh, during 2014-15. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, can you share how, uh, how community members are conducting spring shed monitoring once the spring shed restoration program is over. Yeah, so again, it, it, it's in, in our place, in our place, it is the Gram Panchayat. It is the Gram Panchayat and uh, uh, the Gram Panchayat uh, forms the part of the community in our place. So the lead role is taken by the Gram Panchayat, the Panchayat president. So uh, during the Gram, Gram Sabha, uh, people uh, and, and also they, they, there are functionaries uh, at the Gram Panchayat level. So they designate these to uh, some of the barefoot engineers. So they have maintained, uh, you know, diary. So they uh, quarterly or, uh, you know, uh, even monthly, they go and collect the discharge. Any questions? 
Um, I have one question. Um, you were talking about uh, the siltation uh, processes. Um, yeah. I wanted to know what kind of um, methods were used for the silting. No, simply like it's a it's an earthen trench, right? In 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 a, in a certain uh, dimension, desiltation means when the runoff water it keeps on flowing on the trenches, the clay gets settled on the you know bed of the trenches, so it becomes uh, almost like uh, you know hard. So desiltation means now we have to go to that trench and uh, take out that upper layer of the clay that has settled. In fact, the clay, it does not allow the water to infiltrate. So once the upper layer of the clay, uh, after uh, two or three, you know, recharge activities uh, gets collected, once it is removed, the, you know, the efficiency of the recharge pond, again, the infiltration capacity again increases. That is how we do it. Uh, okay, uh, one more question. Um, like you said, uh, a perennial spring has a higher storativity and yeah. a seasonal spring has lower storativity. Um, what do, wh why, is, why is there a difference? I mean, what is the difference in that? Why is there a low and high storativity issue? See, uh, spring, uh, see, when, when you see a spring uh, flowing, uh, See, I said like the springs, springs are the part of water cycle, right? So when it rains on the Himalayas, it suddenly flows down as a runoff, surface runoff, and it reaches the river. Certain water, it you know, percolates inside the earth and it comes, uh, it, it goes inside and then it stay, stays in the chamber and that we call it as a aquifer. But yet, I don't have any evidence to show the aquifer does exist, but since the springs are flowing 360 days, and we have done some isotope studies also, uh, wherein we found the you know residual time of water about one hundred uh, about uh, one and a half year, uh, six month to one and a half year. So there is a flushing out process that was shown in our data. So there is something something the water is getting stored inside the you know uh, what do you call the mountain now. The storativity means like what would be the cap capacity of that, uh, you know, storage. Uh, st you just considered uh, aquifer what we are considering as a tank and springs as a tap around the mountain. So when it fills up and reaches the tap level, the spring starts flowing. So that is what we are considering, the aquifer, aquifer for the storativity. So that needs to be there. So the larger storativity would allow a continuous flow of the water from the spring. So in a seasonal spring, as it is evident physically, during rain only, uh, during rain or after a few weeks or months, uh, after the rain, the water starts, uh, you know, water flows. And certainly when the lean season start, stop, starts, the water completely stops. So that, that is that that is very evident that there is no storage. The water is not getting stored inside in a sufficient quantity so that it continuously flow, it flows in the lean season. Okay, uh, thank you so much again uh, for your presentation. Uh, it was really insightful and I believe that all the participants here have uh, gained some new perspective on springs and also, also of course the technical aspects of it has been really well explained by sir here and we thank you for your presence here today and we wish you the best and we hope that in the future we will be able to work together and also uh, you know meet hopefully after once the covid situation has uh, uh, has covid situation is better thank, thank you. you so much again thank also you. for the participants there's also um Hara Vika's handbook that you can find online. Uh, you can get it uh, in the PDF form also. And anyone who wants to go through their work and the handbook that has been published, you can also check it online. It is uh, called Dhara Vika's Handbook, a user manual for spring check development to revive Himalayan springs. So you can check that out also. Uh, we thank you all the participants for being here today and also to our partners and my colleagues um, from FES. Uh, we, uh, we hope that you will join us again in the, com in the coming um, webinar series again. So with that, I would just like to end this webinar session. Thank you so much for your presence here, all of you. We hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much.